The Mangala Sutta is included in a collection of discourses called Sutta Nipata. Now, the Sutta Nipata collection contains a great variety of discourses, some of which are on subjects suitable for the lay people. Some of the other discourses have great depth for the serious practitioners. The Sutta Nipata itself is contained in the minor collections or the Kuddhaka Nikaya. The introduction of the Sutta says that the Buddha was staying at the Jetavana Grove and the garden of Anathapindika at Savati at that time. Now it was very late at night and a celestial being with surpassing brilliance and beauty appeared before the Buddha to ask him this question. Many deities and human beings have pondered deeply what are the highest mangala which can bring them happiness and safety. Please expound to us what is the highest mangala. The original meaning of the word mangala is almond or auspicious or good luck. In the Indian society, during the Buddhist time, people are attached to superstitious beliefs of almonds of good luck and bad luck. Actually, we are no different from that if you see what is happening among the people of our time. Naturally, people are interested to know what are the auspicious signs and they want the Buddha to give some views on this matter. In his reply, the Buddha bypassed the superstitious meaning of Mangala and has taken the word to mean blessings. It relates to the conditions that bring us satisfaction, happiness, and prosperity in life. Certainly, this is something that all of us would like to have in our lives, worldly and domestic happiness. In this discourse, the Buddha gave a string of 38 blessings that would bring a person great benefit depending on his or her situation. The 38 gems of highest blessings are strung up together. Now, each of the blessings varies in nature and scope according to the needs of the individuals in terms of their life journey and level of spiritual development. The Buddha began his answer with very down-to-earth blessings such as avoiding the company of fools, keeping company with the wise, honour those worthy of honour, living in a good location, and performing merits in the past. These blessings lay the foundation of our material and spiritual development. And for us to make progress in the world, we need to cultivate other blessings, such as having the right direction in life, training in skills, discipline and speech, and fulfilling our basic responsibilities as well as social obligations. These are then followed by the cultivation of higher qualities and the contact with religious life Finally, the Buddha mentioned the blessings that would lead to higher and higher levels of one's spiritual development, which culminates into the supramundane state of Nibbana.